same violence and all the kind of violence. What's good, Shadow Realm? It's the Black Gen Z Mindset. Make sure you go ahead and like, comment, share, subscribe, and let's get into the video. Yeah, that meeting uh, just wrapped up a short time ago, we're told, uh, by staffers associated with some of the older persons here. You know, that new policy that the feds have just put in place. What At this point, it is not clear just how much it might impact Chicago because most of those who are coming here are asylum seekers who are here in this country legally. But as we mentioned, the older persons are wrapping up that meeting with members of the Department of Homeland Security just a short time ago. So guys, as you can see, we're still talking about this border crisis here. And I mean, you just have illegals coming in, you know, at the at rates of into the tens of thousands. So it's totally unsustainable. Um, these so-called sanctuary sanctuary cities are now trying to denounce their um, <laughs> sanctuary, if you will, and deny these migrants from coming in and depleting the resources of their cities and states. As more and more buses continue to arrive in Chicago with migrants seeking asylum, the Johnson administration is seeing a change in who is being sent here. We are now seeing a shift where the majority of our bus passengers are single adults. That will definitely be shifting ways that we are opening up shelters. And mm. So now, at first they were saying, oh, well, it's women and, ch and their children, families. Now you're starting to see single adults, mainly single adult men. Now, if it was single adult women, then I'd be, oh, okay, you know, maybe we could take some of these hoes in. But no, <laughs> the single adult men have to go, all right? And um, they're shipping these men in. In the tens of thousands like i said and i mean it's just it's not good it's not right it's hurting the people the locals but like i said i mean these people they voted for this um they've been demanding this they've been asking for this and now they want to complain about it i'm thinking through um you know the different types of uh arrangements that we need to make sources telling us the department of homeland security experts were visiting shelters as part of their trip to chicago in just the last hour we saw numerous older persons arriving at the fifth floor of city hall to attend a special briefing with fema and homeland security experts to discuss how the federal government might be able to better help chicago but with some questions being raised about the real value of mayor johnson's planned trip to the southern border his deputy chief of staff defending the upcoming trip it's really important to go to one of the um points upstream to really understand the conditions, the circumstances, the processing. So you have Brandon jo uh, Johnson, who's going to go to the border. And here's the thing. He's already got enough issues in his um, own city. And he's going to go to the border and take a cameo, take a picture and act like he's doing some when he ain't doing a damn thing. It's just for show. I mean, these Democrats they don't want any solutions. They don't want anything to be done about this. They want our country be, to be overrun. Um, to get a better kind of grasp of the magnitude. And with the governor having sent two teams to the border in the last year, he said they do have value. It's important to develop relationships, one-on-one -on -one relationships with the folks who are on the ground doing the work in Texas. I'm talking about the folks who are actually doing the work of feeding, clothing, providing shelter for people on the ground. The mayor's office is still scouring the city for places to set up the base camp tents for migrants, but looking to move with urgency. We are hopeful that we'll be able to drop, you know, put some stakes into the ground soon, but we've got to do our due diligence. Also today, Illinois House Speaker Chris Welch was here at City Hall to meet with Mayor Brandon Johnson to talk about funds that the state might appropriate for the city to help with the migrant crisis during the fall veto session. But earlier, the governor seemed to throw water on that idea, saying the budget is already in place and it's not like the state has millions of dollars just lying around. We're back now with a record number of migrants crossing into the U.S., pushing resources to the limit in many American cities. Now hospitals are sounding the alarm, saying they're also overwhelmed, including some far from the border. Julia Ainsley has our report. 
Tonight, the border crisis surging. Officials telling NBC News there were over 200,000 illegal crossings at the southern border last month. Woo! 200,000 illegal crossings, and it's probably more than that, just last month. So that's about 6,000 coming a day. I mean, to round it up, 7,000 coming a day. This is not good and not sustainable. And a record 3 million migrants crossed the border in the last year. Now, a new warning, a thousand miles away in New York City, where officials tell us resources are overwhelmed. Across public hospitals in New York City, over the last year, nearly 30,000 visits by migrants and 300 new babies born to migrant moms. Staff here at Bellevue Hospital tell us they're eager to help, but the numbers are tough. This has been the hardest work that I've ever done, but it's been the most impactful work that I've ever done. And most of the visits to the taxpayer-funded legal clinic here are by migrants. Our clinics are full, and there are waiting lists, and people... So we have clinics full, and instead of giving American taxpaying citizens treatment, they're giving treatment to migrants. People are turning people away. Or illegal aliens. These burrito gremlins are on demon time. Way or referring them to other places. Randy Redkin from New York's Legal Assistance Group says so many migrants are asking for legal help on asylum representation and health care access. Now, she says, American citizens who need legal assistance with issues like eviction and insurance have to wait up to 10 weeks. If you ask me, do we need more resources for legal services? I would say absolutely yes. Meanwhile, New York's governor now slamming the situation at the border. It is too open right now. Uh, people coming from all over the world are finding their way through simply saying they need asylum. And New York Mayor Eric Adams saying providing services for migrants will cost city taxpayers $12 billion. But Biden administration officials have blamed Adams' response. It is not an operationally sound effort, one senior DHS official told NBC News. Meanwhile, migrants on the streets are desperate for city help. We met Orlando, who fled violence in Venezuela. He didn't want to appear on camera telling us he slept on the street before coming to Bellevue for cancer treatment. How is that for you? given your medical condition, to be sleeping on the street. You have to make believe it's a good bed, a king size, and you lie down wherever and go to sleep, he said. And here's the thing, bro. You should have just stayed in your own country. And, 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 and I mean, y'all need to go back to your own country and fix the problems there because all you're doing is just bringing the problems over here. Says. Orlando tells us he came to New York because he heard about the social services the city would offer to migrants like himself who were trying to start a new life. The Biden administration recently granted temporary legal status to nearly half a million Venezuelans, wow. allowing them to work. Today, Governor Hochul announced there are 18,000 jobs now available to eligible migrants. What's good, Shadow Realm? It's your boy, Jenquavius Jackson, and y'all already know I'm demonetizing shadow ban in this bitch. So if you want to contribute, go to the Cash App, the PayPal, the GoFundMe, or join the Patreon. Also, don't forget to visit the merch store for all your favorite BGZM News 17 gear, including our exclusive Trump is a Blood t-shirt. Go fast before they sell out. They are already flying off the shelves, no cap. And remember, these super gremlins are on demon time. Towns, many other border towns across the U.S. Shelters here in El Paso say they are at capacity. Migrants are sleeping on the streets all over El Paso, and the shelters say they are quickly running out of resources. The food bank says it only has about a 25-day supply of food left, mm. and if it has to add government workers who are not receiving pay to that number, it says it needs help immediately. It's been very hard because my family, we don't have money and we were separated. But after the first day we got here, we reunited and we stayed on the street together. And they really think like they're really coming here and being told that they're going to be given opportunities that even Americans don't have. I mean, what's going on in this country is a travesty. They're, they're literally ruining our country by having this open border policy. It, it just doesn't make sense. Jennifer and her family have been in the U.S. a little more than a week. They slept on the streets of El Paso at night and looked for food during the day. 
Then a woman told them a spot had opened up at the El Paso Rescue Mission. It was like an angel came out of heaven. It was very good for us. She says they are lucky because thousands of migrants lie in the streets and parks of El Paso. The city says it has received at least 1,800 migrants a day for the past week and a half. All shelters say they are full and the food bank says it is quickly running out of resources and now preparing for what it calls a triple threat. Migrant surge is much different from what we've been seeing over the last several years. This is an incredibly challenging time for the food bank. We serve about one in five people in our own the potential government shutdown means government workers would go without pay. And that could be trouble here because the food bank is already feeding their max, about a thousand people per day. In addition to the migrant surge and the potential government shutdown, we're working with 23,000 government employees here in this area, as well as the 38,000 soldiers on court list. We're looking at a pretty tough time. A bill has been introduced that would ensure that military personnel are paid during the potential government shutdown. The Biden administration recently announced that it does plan to send an additional 3,000 military personnel to the border to help with operations. And so he's sending 3,000 military um, personnel to the border, but are they going to stop people from coming over? That's the real question. And they would be affected by the potential shutdown if that bill is not passed. In El Paso, Texas, Joy Addison, Fox News. All right, welcome back here to Live Now from Fox. I'm Giacomo Luca. Thanks for joining us as we come back here at 742 now on the East Coast, 442 over on the West Coast. Uh, we're learning in this developing story this morning that the Biden administration's waiving dozens of federal laws to build a border wall in South Texas. It's the first time the administration's used this type of executive power. Fox News' Gary Baumgarten has more on this. Wow, so um, I saw this headline, wasn't sure how true it was, but the Biden administration is, it looks like they're posturing toward allowing the construction of the wall to continue. And it's just crazy because they were calling Trump a racist for the longest for even hinting at building a wall and now you know we know that the biden administration had the walls welded open and now he's talking about re building the wall reconstructing the wall i mean it, <laughs> this guy it, it's like okay we got our goal we got as many illegals in now it's time to secure the borders i don't know what the plan is but i mean it's just disgraceful. It's a rare move for the Biden administration. The White House waiving 26 federal laws that will allow for border wall construction in South Texas. The Department of Homeland Security announcing on Wednesday that Starr County is seeing a surge of migrants across the border illegally. This fiscal year alone, 245,000 people illegally crossed through the region, according to government data. In a statement, Secretary of Homeland Security Alejandro Mayorkas said, quote, there is presently an acute and immediate need to construct physical barriers and roads in the vicinity of the border of the United States. Wow. <laughs> so instead of directly saying, oh, we need a wall, there is presently an acute and immediate need to construct Physical barriers and roads in the vicinity. In the vicinity? No. Um, on the border, we need the wall. It needs to be built to stop the mass illegal immigration. Otherwise, we're not going to have a country to protect. United States. The president has done more to secure the border and to deal with this issue. All of this oh comes as illegal entries remain high across the entire southern border. Customs and border protection data shows... More than 2.8 million migrant encounters occurred this fiscal year. We take a look at what's happening at our southern border. It is an absolute disaster down there. Extending the border wall contradicts President Biden's statements in 2020 when he promised that, quote, not another foot of wall would be built under him. Those on a local level are also struggling to deal with the influx of asylum seekers. New York City's Mayor Eric Adams taking the journey to Latin America this week 
as he plans to discourage those seeking shelter from coming to New York. Basically, uh, it has given the false promise of what life is like of being a migrant and asylum seeker. Gary Baumgarten, Fox News. All right, guys. So um, I wanted to play this last clip by Wesley Hunt, and he essentially is going to break down the border crisis. He and he is a black representative from Texas. And I love what he said in addressing this issue. And I'm probably not going to interrupt it because I'm going to let him cook. And we're just going to sit back and do the stank face at what he's saying. Because he, I mean, he, he's really snapping and spitting bars right here um, in this uh, hearing. So let's get to it. Texas, Mr. Hunt, you're recognized for five minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I want to thank all the witnesses for being here today. Really, really appreciate you all being here. Thank you for your time. I mean, from the bottom of my heart. Behind me, you see a picture that speaks for itself. This is what I call sheer chaos. And by the way, this photo was captured in 2021. A little background on me. I'm a combat veteran, deployed to Baghdad in 2006. That's about what it looked like when I was there in a combat zone. This is what happens when you refuse to control our border and our sovereign nation. We're overrun by cartels trafficking in migrants, drugs, and crime. These are all realities in Joe Biden's America, except now they're being felt well beyond our border states like mine in Texas. It's not just Republicans sounding the alarm now. This is happening with Democrats as well. Next picture. Mayor Eric Adams, as we've heard a few of the congressmen say on August 22nd, about New York, I'm proud that this is the right to shelter state and we're going to continue that. That's the leader of the largest cities in America. And if you remember in 2022, he even met migrants as they entered New York. Let's fast forward to May 2023 and Mayor Adams through executive order has suspended the law he was so proud of. And it seems that even Democrats are starting to see the light. It only gets real when it's in your backyard. This is something that we've been experiencing in Texas for the past few years. We've had six and a half million people enter our country illegally at our southern border. This is the most we've seen in my lifetime. It's absolute chaos. It's a crisis. I get text messages every single week from people finding dead bodies on their ranches. And yet we sit by here and do nothing with this current administration. Never in my life have I had a problem that I did not see an ending to, and I don't see an ending to this. This issue will destroy New York. Those are his words. Next up, Kathy Hochul, the governor from the great state of New York. In December 2021, Governor Hochul said, and I quote, as you know, the Statue of Liberty is inscribed and it says, give me your tired, your poor, your huddled masses. You're welcome with open arms and we'll work to keep you safe. Give me your tired, your poor, your huddled masses yearning to breathe free. The wretched refuse of her teeming shore. Send these, the homeless, tempest tossed to me. I lift my lamp beyond the golden door. That's actually what it says. And I know it by heart because I learned it when I was a child. That's what this country is all about. This is actually what I fought for. So please, no, I'm not xenophobic. I love my country. I want to die for it. My parents took me to the Statue of Liberty and made me memorize that. This is not that. This is a disgrace. Do not try to pawn this off as if this is Ellis Island and people that are trying to come to this country to find a better way for themselves. Because right now, we ain't got it. Don't do that to me. Don't insult my intelligence and don't insult the intelligence of the American people. Now that we have these people coming here in mass, it's go somewhere else. Can't sit here, seats taken. All of a sudden, the governor turns into Forrest Gump. And in Biden's America, from it seems like to me, for him, life is like a box of chocolates. You never know what you're gonna get. And that's the way he's governing our country right now, we don't even know what we're gonna get.
But now the governor is saying, if you're thinking of coming to New York, we are truly out of space. And you're going to leave your country, so go somewhere else. This is what happens when we don't abide by the laws that we have already set in our country. Are we a sovereign nation or not? Are we a nation of laws or not? This has now become the United States of lawlessness. Ma'am, you talked about, Ms. Williams, I saw your testimony earlier on TV, ma'am. You said you don't want this to be political. I hate to break it to you. Unfortunately, it is. And if you can't see the dichotomy between what we are saying on this side of the dais and our colleagues on the left, pay attention, ma'am. I wish this wasn't a political issue, to be honest with you. I wish we could all agree that having six and a half million people enter our country illegally is not a sustainable model. We cannot afford it. We bring in $5 trillion a year from the American taxpayer, the hardworking American taxpayer, and we're spending $7 trillion and then bringing in 6 million people that we can't afford. Enough is enough. And that's why we have hearings like this, to elucidate the American public, to let them know we are fighting tirelessly just for our country. We are not xenophobic. Trust me, I'm not racist. I just want my country back. Thank you all so much for being here. I yield back the rest of my time. Thank you.